let's take a minute to talk about um, how Reason handles audio files. Because Reason works a lot differently than most other DAWs and how it handles your audio recordings or any sampling that you may do in the samplers or with Kong, for instance. And let's just look at the project files between two different programs. Here, I've got examples for Studio One. With Studio One and other programs like uh, Cubase, you have a folder which contains your project. If we double click, these are just demo songs for Studio One. If I double click on one of these project folders, within it, we have the project file. We also have several folders here. If I double click on the media and see we have access to individual WAV files, uh, these may have been recorded, vocals or a live guitar recordings that you can access, the individual WAV files or whatever format you've recorded to uh, by opening up the project folder. Now with Reason, it functions differently with its uh, projects. So I've got a folder full of um, project files for a reason. Now this is what you, what you have for a reason. There, if I double click on this, it's going to open the program and you're going to be within the song. I cannot double click on these and access individual audio recordings that I've done within that particular project. Even though you can see here by the size, these are very different depending on how many recordings I have and how many samples or uh, Rex files I may have chosen to contain within the project file. But in order to access them, I need to open up the project file itself uh, and launch Reason. And so I've done that here, and we've got one of those project files open. And let's just jump right into an example of if we... Let me just delete that out. I'm going to start from the beginning here and record a brief audio sample. Check one, two, mic check one, two, two, two. So now we've got audio recorded. Um, and again, reason is different than most other programs. With others, you may have a pool where you can go and see all of the recordings that you've done, similar to what we just did there. This is the one place where you have to see your recordings and to work with them. So if you, and this looks blank, but there is actually something here. If I right click and normalize that, we can see we've got our audio there. If I'd like to work with this outside of Reason, you have a couple different options. You can right click, choose bounce, and bounce clip to disc. You now have a dialog here where you can choose wave or AIF. And then once you click save, I mean, you can choose your location where you'd like for it to go. And once you click save, you're going to have additional settings for bit depth uh, and a couple other items that you can choose from. So that's the first way you can get your audio out. You can right click on a clip and uh, just bounce that down to hard disk. The other option that you have is you can come to file and choose bounce mixer channels. So here we have the mixer channels represented for each instrument and each audio track that I have within this project. And you can select or deselect whatever you'd like to bounce down outside of reason. So this is our audio track, the recording that we just did. If I'd like to get that outside of reason to work within another DAW or editing program or for whatever reason, uh, you would just ch be sur sure that it's checked. You can also choose the master section, but this is essentially the same as rendering down your whole song. But we just want that audio track we just recorded. And now you can choose from the mixer settings and what will be applied to that specific channel or channels. Um, all channel settings are applied, then you've got everything except for the fader section. None, so the signal will be tapped before EQ, dynamics, and other channel settings. You can also choose to normalize and also the range, so if you want to set your left and right loop locators uh, to bounce down a specific section of bars, you can do that. Or you can just choose the default setting of from this very start to the end marker. Now, in its default setting, it's going to create a new track within the song. 
and you can also choose to mute the original. But what we're talking about is getting it outside of Reason to work with in some other fashion. So you can choose audio files on disk, and you can choose the file type there, sample rate, and bit depth, as well as whether you want to dither or not in 16-bit. But I'm just going to cancel now. That's just know that this is the second way where if you want to work with your individual recordings outside of Reason, uh, unfortunately, if this is something that you do on a regular basis, you will need to render each one down by, by either right-clicking on the clip and bouncing down to disk or coming to File and choosing Bounce Mixer Channels, selecting the ones that you'd like to do. Now there is an area that functions similar to the pool in a lot of other dolls within Reason, and that's when you're working with samples. So I've got a Kong here, and I have, I'll F6 and bring that up. I've got different audio field recordings that I have imported into each cell, and I can take a look at those within what would be kind of the equivalent of the pool within Reason. And in order to access that, I would choose the song samples, here to the left, if I click that, since these samples are being used in Kong, they would be considered assigned because they're assigned to an instrument. So I can just right click on that arrow, choose the Kong, and here are all of the different field samples that I am using within Kong. And we can right click on that and edit the sample, duplicate, export, or delete. And the, I'm going to stop that. Uh, auto audition. Alternatively, if I close that up, we can go to the all self-contained samples folder, and this is going to show you all of the samples that are contained within each instrument and other, if you've chosen to render down an audio recording as a sample, we'll take a quick look at that in a second. Um, everything that's used within your, uh, all of the samples used within your project you will find here. And you also have the option to, you can right click and you can edit, duplicate, export, or delete. And one other important area to keep in mind is that if we come to file, we can choose the song self-contained settings and this is going to have an impact on what is included within your project file that single project file that we're looking at here this these settings directly determine how large that file is going to be and what's contained within there so we can see that most of the samples that are being used in Kong are selected there's a couple here that are not selected so we can select those and choose for those to be included in our project file as well. You can see the size for each audio sample. And you can see there are some other files. There's, we've got a Rex file here and recording and new sample. I can show you how I got those there. At the bottom, you can see we have a self-contained size, readout. You can uncheck all or check all. One other thing worth mentioning is that I do have an NXT in use in this project, or at least that I brought in for this example video. And the baby or the grand piano patch is loaded in that NXT. So that's why we have this Reason Factory sound bank. But note that you can't select this to be included. If you're going to be opening up the project file on a different computer or you know, sending it to someone, then Reason's going to, this is just going to provide a reference for that factory sound. So if someone's opening this up on a different computer, then they're going to have an NXT and they're going to have that Reason factory sound bank anyway. So this just helps create a smaller file size. I'll cancel out of here. If you did have MIDI recorded for this grand piano and you uh, wanted to include that, then again, you would just bounce that track down and then in that way you can include it within the project file.
A couple other things worth mentioning is if I F7 and come back to the sequencer, we can right click on that. You can also create a new sample. So if we choose bounce clip to new sample, this is that audio recording that we did at the beginning of the video. You can see audio track one, audio track one, two. This is another one that I've done earlier before the video. Actually, I'm lying to you. This is just the one. This is the one that we created. This is a Rex file. So if I, if you'd like to create a Rex file from any of your audio recordings, just know that you can double click, open up the inline editor, right click on that clip, and choose bounce to Rex loop. And now we have that audio track one, three. And that's because I've been working with some of this before the video and that's why we have these additional numbers. Typically you just have the one, two, three, and so on. Now I'll escape out of the inline editor. If I bounce to new recording, that will be contained within this clip. So I double clicked and then I'll choose open and comp edit. Then you can see we have an additional copy created of our original recording and that was created when we just did that recent bounce. So I hope this clarifies how audio files are handled within Reason. If there's anything missed out that I missed out on or you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment below.